Okay, I got some trim clad gray. I got my gun from Princess Auto. And we're gonna just gonna splash some good old primer on it. Um, basically, I just wanna keep it from rusting while I work on it and flip it over. There's gonna be some spots that we missed with sandblasting and I can hit that, clean that up yet, and then just spray it with primer again before we hit it with some color. Put my suit on, put my gloves on, put my mask on, everything from Princess Auto, and then we're good to go. Okay, there it is, uh, primed. Actually, it dries really, really nice and quick that way with the thinner on there. So there's lots of little spots that I have to hit with the um, scale remover. Just a few spots that uh, were missed from the sandblasting. He didn't get too carried away on these top ones, and I told him that because he's running out of sand, and the boards are gonna go there anyway, but things in like the corner here, I still gotta get those get rid of that and then I can touch it up with the uh, primer again but at least now I can leave it outside and um, tomorrow we're gonna flip it upside down probably gonna put it back to where I had it and then um, I can prime the everything that was there upside down and then we can push down and weld the plate on the bottom and then I'll paint it black flip it over paint it black again uh, everything else like on the inside and then we'll paint the deck and the outsides the tan so this is a big step at least it doesn't have to be in the shop it's not gonna rain tonight everything that's up is covered so now um, I uh, get my shop back because it's been raining the last little bit I can't do anything just walking around this thing the whole time so I'll put the neck inside and I can squeeze that around the back and put that back in again, clean up my little bit of stuff here. And uh, yeah, that looks good. There's a lot of work. I had my suit on and I just sweat like crazy in that thing. It's like wearing a garbage bag. So really good for the pores, but uh, I already changed and, and uh, took a shower because <laughs> I can't handle that. <laughs> Gloves too. Everything gets all gross and sticky, but uh, nice being protected all the way around. So, um, yeah, looks really good. I'm happy. I'm happy you guys are happy, right? Here we go. So, unfortunately, uh, I didn't have a descaler in the Hamilton Princess Auto, so I had to run to St. Catharines, but we'll use this to clean up these last little bits here. Let's see how this works. Okay, so there was lots of little spots yet that I had to uh, descale. That's probably one of the worst ones, but little spots here and there, especially in the corners. And that's on me. I should have done a better job descaling before we had it sandblasted, but you think it looks good until they sandblast and then they realize, okay, there's still more spots there. So and then, it, then you think you have it all and then there's more after you paint it. So um, lesson learned, go over it with a fine tooth throw, comb and then go over it again the next day and the day after that but it's going to turn out really good regardless now it's not going to be perfect um because it is an old trailer from ontario and you got to realize that at some point we got to call it and realize that we can't put a thousand hours into this trailer but um it'll look a hundred percent better than it did and uh it's going to be perfect for what we needed to do so we're going to prime all those spots that i missed that shows definitely through the next day so we'll hit that again and then we can flip it upside down and primer the bottom. So here we go. I don't know if the camera picks that up, but I'm just like soaked right through. My whole shirt is just completely drenched. Time to change some clothes. Whew. 
Okay, so I highly recommend um, flipping trailers upside down like this. This works fantastic. <laughs> Look at how easy it is to work on. Nice. So we're going to vacuum this out. Um, get all the last of the sand out, then blow dry it clean. And oh, somebody shoved that full of dirt. Terrible. Um, we'll vacuum this clean, we'll blow dry it, then we'll paint it, and then we are good to go. So hopefully I can get some black on this. Uh, again, questionable weather today. It rained last night. Uh, luckily we had everything primed good enough that it didn't rust. Um, but yeah, the bottom is just starting to go here a little bit, but the trim cloud um, goes right over top of that not an issue I got a little bit of water in there that's not great we'll leave that to last I guess we'll blow that clean maybe hit that with a torch yeah I'll lift up on it we'll support it put some weight on it weld it like this so it'll be like this for the next couple weeks um, my wife's gonna love it okay so another hour of vacuuming and blowing and descaling and then vacuuming and blowing it again and and a little bit more descaling and then one more time i think we got it so we're gonna just mix up some more paint and color good maybe we'll blow it off one more time okay there it is Whew. that's a lot of work <laughs> that was three hours painting two and a half i think gopro died but uh, i didn't do the bottom runners because i gotta grind that paint off anyway probably put grease in between that and the plates and welding on Okay, that turned out really nice. I'm super happy with how it's going on. Um, hit it with the uh, descaler, just a couple spots that I that I missed that were evident afterwards. So um, yeah, and then vacuumed it, blew it out again. I think I'm gonna paint it black right away now because the longer I wait, the dirtier it gets. It gets dusty, all that stuff. It's nice and clean now still. So we're gonna put black on the bottom and on the bottom of the fenders and on that. Um, I'm also gonna put black on the inside rails, top, bottom, inside, and out, and on the inside here and the I-beams on the side there. For a couple of reasons, if things get damaged or get weld splatter or something on there, I just hit it with more black. Um, two, I have some black cans left over. Got a couple more to cover the rest. Um, three is cheaper than um, the mixed paint and four if somebody wants to paint by the trailer and doesn't like the tan then or if we sell the truck and trailer separate who knows five years down the road then uh, they can just paint the outside and the top of the deck black with some trim clad and then they will be um, It'll be a nice universal trailer again, but I want it to match the cab over. So we'll do the black first. It's been a perfect day. I don't think it's going to rain. The temperature is going down, so I might not sweat as much for this round, but it should be dry by the time it gets dark. So here we go. Okay, well that's the nicest that's looked for 20 years. That turned out really good actually, I'm happy with that. Just the right amount of runs in there. Just when I bump into like the hub when I'm going underneath there, it just, just lets me know I'm putting the right amount of paint down there. So, um, I'm not gonna do the side pieces yet until I weld in that because all the um sparks are going to burn into the paint and then it's going to rust right away so the primer will protect it good enough um so it won't rust away and then the slag and the sparks will burn into the primer and then i'll cover that up with black paint afterwards so that was three hours i figure something like that i don't have my phone on me but i can't go too much longer i need to hydrate and relax clean my guns and then um get ready to weld that up so here we go
we got this on there. I put grease in between the two layers uh, just to keep the water out. Try to keep it from rusting because I don't want it to rust from the inside out. So now my block is 44, I believe, 42. The block is 42, so it fits on the, on the plate and I can still weld on the outside. What I'm gonna do is just weld on the inside, just a little stitch, and then put the block on top and then weld from the outside, uh, from the middle of the trailer to the out. So before I do that though, I want to measure how high I am off the ground. And from there, I'm 26 inches to the top of the I-beam. So that's at the I-beam that's got the plug on it. So that's roughly in the middle. So I'll fire up the welder, clamp it down on the inside, make it so that this can't move, and then drop that big 4x4 block on there. And then I'll take the payloader, uh, Phil's payloader, fill the entire bucket with stone, and put the bucket on top of that stone. That should be fine. Here we go. Okay, so I messed up. Uh, that was too much grease. I thought I was using it sparingly enough, but it seems to be that when, um, when I weld, it pulls the grease out and you can see it catching fire, you can see it smoking, and it really just ruins the weld. It's full of porosity, does not look good at all. So we're gonna grind this weld off, flip this plate over, wipe off all the grease. Uh, a little bit, I'm sure, is fine. We gotta make sure that we keep it well back so that when we're welding, it uh, doesn't ruin the weld. So, live and learn. Don't do that. Um, we'll try again. Here we go. All right, luckily Vince is here. He's gonna tell me everything that I did wrong. My welds aren't looking too, too bad on the other side, but I'm gonna get Vince to tell me the proper settings on my welder. And so, it's not too bad. is that too hot or too cold? Uh, it's probably where you're roughly sitting. Yeah? yeah I had a bit hotter and I've, uh, what's that, 7018s? Yeah, 18. Yeah. 28, yeah, that's fine. That's, yeah. yeah. So I had it a little hotter and I was kind of burning into it pretty deep. Getting so I, digging? Yeah. yeah. So um, on, on stick, on, on a corner like this, mm -hmm. how do you hold your rod? Straight in 45 in or? I have a 20 degree, or 15, 20 degree forward angle. And then and you drag, drag it? Yep. Okay. And with and MIG, hold. you always push. Yeah. So you slag, you drag. If your arc's really consistent, you can just burn straight. Okay. Like you can keep going. If you see it getting all wonky, grabbing an edge or this edge, yep. you can kind of pull it out of its you know, fluctuation and do little circles and it'll start to straighten out again. Oh, okay. Some guys weld circles the whole time. I don't personally, but. Okay. That's more work. Yeah, <laughs> takes longer. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, just always in the toes. So you got this one, once that one's laid down, see that line that's laying there? Yeah. That'll be your next one right in that toe. And then that oh, okay. one would be right so on that. So how many passes would you do? I'd do three on that. Three on that? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Root's the main one. That first one you put in there is everything. Yeah. yeah. And the other ones are just for show? Well, nah, they're, they're just structural buildup, I guess. <laughs> but it's that first one that's everything. Okay, sounds good. Even just this little bit of coaching from Vince. I went from that to that. Very nice. Yeah, that's like that's a really nice one. Yeah, right on. Okay, I don't. I it, it's been it's been good. Fifteen years since I've used stick. Yeah. Not really used stick much. Yeah, a little bit on service calls and. Yeah, it's yeah. not not something they use in the industry. Like like if you're in a like a factory and stuff, they think it's. Uh, time consuming and right. smoky yep. uh, 
spattery so there's rework and, and stuff like that so they right, really right. don't but it's perfect for like in field all position right so yeah. if you're an all position welder you can weld upside down upside down right so. and it's still the strongest among the strongest no yeah oh yeah. yeah yeah majority of all our structural stuff in the field's always done with stick anyways yeah. some guys bring in a buzz box with wire and that but meh they get laughed at nah, it's like, they show up with many trigger things. pushers <laughs> <laughs> pew 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 <laughs> Right on. So we'll do three passes. Um, I'll get you to just weld from like here to here. Yeah. Um, no more, because then that's where we're gonna put our block. And then and then we'll do the rest nice. um, while I flip that one over and clean all the grease off so we can get going on that. Mm. Awesome. Nice. Vince, what's your take on the welder? Excellent. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's running well. Nice. Hot starts good. Hot starts good. So basically... No sticking. It, what's that? It's not sticking. Yeah, nice, <laughs> nice. Well, the welds look really good. Is the is the grease a, a problem? No. No? Okay, good. It's cleaned out enough. And okay. Yeah, it's not doing any porosity in there, so... Okay. All right, grabbing the Michelin again. And digging into that big pile of gravel there. Fire up the old girl. touching here and sitting on these little brackets at the back here. We did not, and it's still at 26. That's crazy. Maybe a quarter inch. That's crazy. So we maybe gained a quarter inch into that I-beam, which is good. Um, so once Vince is done welding on the tank, we'll uh, keep welding this plate. So. I'm, uh, I like this work, just nice, steady, slow work. It's beautiful. And uh, the grease doesn't seem to be affecting it. So, um, lesson learned, be a little bit more sparing on the grease, but here we go. Okay, so starting from the middle and working our way out, just kind of going in circles all the way around, getting bigger and bigger. Um, and we're getting better and better. These welds are looking pretty nice. Really happy with that. So I'm only doing the root pass for now just to get it all tied down because eventually Phil's gonna want this thing back. And uh, I can take it off once I have a weld everywhere. So, um, so yeah, these are Vince's uh triple pass i'll see what my triple pass looks like but i'm really happy with uh my initial root pass so um this is probably yeah one full day to do one pass um so maybe you know me i'll just work overtime instead of watching tv i can get it done in a day and a half nice yeah that was a big step because then splash paint on it and keep carrying on. But coffee time, and then we'll keep going after. Here we go. As the back end is all done, I've got uh, maybe four feet to do in the front. Four, eight, 12, 16. 
plus this, but uh, we're pretty safe to bring the payloader back. Phil, as a good neighbor said, do not bring that gravel back. So um, uh, that's what great neighbors are for. With me finishing the first pass, which is a total of 100 feet of welding, we're now able to take the weight off of it as the steel is nice and tight. And as you guys might know, Vince has gotten a new job welding fancy food grade stuff uh, a couple towns over. But his son, Joel, is also training to be a welder and is going to school for it. So I figured we'd hire him because this is a pretty easy weld once you uh, get the angle and the, and the settings right. It's just a matter of patience and laying it down nice and thick. So while I am on other projects, it's a nice way to kind of spread all the work around because I can't do everything myself. All right, so coming back next day, uh, Joel's welds look amazing. Looks really, really nice. Looks like he's catching the upper plate and the bottom. Um, so with the 3 16 rod, we can get away with just one, one more pass. It's a little too windy yet to paint today, but there's still lots of other stuff to do. I'm going to pressure wash everything because there's a lot of these little pieces laying around. So I got to wash those off and make sure that they don't get stuck in the paint. On top of that, I'm gonna, ah, uh, getting old. I'm gonna take the grinder and cut all these uh, leftover bolts off first. Uh, it's a pain when you're drilling a hole and you get half of a bolt and it wrecks your drill bits and stuff and they are absolutely everywhere. So we're gonna take the grinder, clean that off. We're also going to straighten some of these beams while it's windy and mount some tires and then hopefully tomorrow we can splash some paint on it. As you guys know I've got two daughters we, we give them an allowance and for that allowance they have certain chores that they have to do on top of that I pay them 25 cents for every piece of steel that they find on the driveway so while I'm cutting just leave them some surprises get them out of the house feel like they can earn a little bit of extra money and it saves me $40 tire repairs every time we do it so here we go Okay, so these are the rims that I got from VNR, um, and they are used, and that's okay. You just gotta make sure that this lip is not worn. That's where the tire rides, and the cheaper rims, like this one, will show a lot more wear than these Alcoas. I think these are still good. Some of these are actually really nice yet. Um, we're gonna mount all those new tires on here anyway. We've got these ones for the inside, and then some nice new HD Plus for the outside. So for the outsides, uh, we went back to traction and got these HD plus rims. Now these have the same rating as the Alcoas. They have a five year warranty on them um, and they do come polished. So they look sick, um, but we do have the original Alcoas on the inside. So with used rims and new tires on the inside, we've got new tires and new rims on the outside. And this is always, I, I, I really don't like doing unboxing, but I mean, when you've got almost $10,000 worth of rims and tires, wheels and tires put together with you stuff, 
you got to show these off. Just pull them off. Pull that. Oh, look at that. That is some nice, shiny rimness there. All right, so we'll take these apart. They come with the valve stems and everything on them. So we'll pull the cores out. And I got six more tires to do. Here we go. Okay, so the trailer flipped over again and uh, I painted everything down here that's going down. I think the camera did, the battery did die, but I wanted to keep going as um, the, the paint and the gun gets, gets dry. The mosquitoes are horrible for some reason. I don't know why I can't wait for first frost to kill everything, which reminds me I am way behind schedule. Now, um, there's a couple comments on the other video, uh, on the other videos on the other channel saying, ah, oh, Rich doesn't do anything anymore. All he does is talk. Well, it's because this takes a long time. I've got hundreds of hours into here and I got hundreds of hours to go. Um, already got a bunch of the brakes uh, put together and that will be in the next video. And then I'll flip it over one more time, do the air tanks, all the air lines, all the wiring. Um, and then paint just the um, one side yet black um, while it's laying down. Make sure that I've got everything nicely covered. And then we'll flip it over again and then paint the outsides before it gets too cold. Still got another six weeks of uh, acceptable temperatures to paint outside. And I got to get that done. But I'm already doing a pile of work back there. So um, yeah, thanks for watching guys. Uh, it takes, takes time. But um, like I said, like I always say, the pride in getting it done, doing it yourself, um, having the paint match that beautiful rig back there, and then having this giant thing on there um, just makes everything so worthwhile. So get out there and work on it. Um, and uh, as always, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. Here we go.